record me in progress. <laughs> I'm There's sure, always something. I'm sure many have. Indeed they have. Indeed they have. Anyway, here we are, post Pride. Post Pride. And we uh, did it again. <laughs> Oops. Isn't that a song? Oops, we did it again. Anyway. <laughs> Not Britney. Yes. Britney Spears, baby. Yeah. Way to reference. Well done. Yeah. So um, what do you want to talk about? I mean, you know, some pretty big stuff happened the last couple of days. I know. First, I'll say that New York City Pride was amazing. Um, met lots of people that came from actually Toronto. And I heard of lots of some friends in Toronto were saying they had met a lot of people from New York. And I just sort of love that, like, we're close enough as cities that, like, you can kind of, if you want to break from New York City Pride, you can go to another Pride that's super close, but still big and exciting. Um, this year felt like before the pandemic in terms of just, like, how busy it was and just the energy. And I worked at the bar Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and, like, nothing but a fabulous fun time. There was no drama. It was all just celebrating. Um, I did the drag march on Friday, which is always such a lovely celebration of like remembering that we wouldn't have anything we have without the drag queens and the trans people at Stonewall in 1969. That was that's sort of why we do that. Um, yeah, it just felt good at the same time. You know, this weekend was like so politically chaotic, chaotic because of the fallout of the debate whoops and then the supreme court ruling or decision to throw it back to the well i i I think, I think it it's more the supreme court and i i saw good little segue into it. i was going to say well uh I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed that weekend because it might be the last one you get to enjoy as far as all the freedoms and stuff that we have oh the doom eddie yeah well, I'm being realistic. I, yeah, no, I, I think it's good to know, be realistic. The uh, If Trump gets in, which he probably will, I mean, I love the way they're calling him the king. And the Supreme Court are his hands. Truly. And, um, you know, it's 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 those him and, and those six people are going to control what happens. Yeah. And what they've already done and what they want to do, they will be able to do it. So, yeah, I, I don't I mean, yes, it's doom and gloom and, and negative. But I I think it's important for people to realize how serious this could be. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm just saying if you, like I don't want people to look back and say, oh, my God, how did this happen? Why did we let this happen? And the only, only way to stop it is for people to vote. Yeah. And to make sure he doesn't get in. Yeah. Yes, Biden had a bad debate. But, you know, that's 90 minutes. And, yeah. and you know. And his policies aren't bad. He's not a, no. ba he's not a bad, he like, so he couldn't get his words out fast enough. He has a stutter. He's done amazingly well, considering that that's just something he's lived with his whole life and been been in politics his whole life, giving speeches. But like, this has nothing to do with him as a human. No, and look what you have to look at what he has accomplished, and you have to look at the people around him. And I think what happened there was he just over prepared. Truly, it was you know he was so tired and he was over prepared, and I think I mean he was just in shock. Yeah. At, at, which he shouldn't have been because if he was prepared properly, um, you know, the, the, it was, it's a good, to me, a good example of how different and how the approaches are so different between the Democrats and the Republicans. Mm -hmm. You know, Biden should have pivoted and done exactly what Trump was doing. Trump never a answered any of the questions. He would yep. say, well, I'll get to that. Or, but before I say that, and yeah. he would go and hammer on Biden on everything. And that's what Biden should have done. He should have continually hammered on him uh, on his convictions and yeah. all the things that he's done and he wants to do and all of that. And, yeah. and he didn't. He just, he completely lost it. And it's a shame. And now, I mean, this to me, and, you know, when I listen to all the pundits, it's like, 
this is almost worse than the abortion thing. I mean, to say oh, yeah. to say that a person like a president is basically immune from anything is insanity. And of course, Trump is running with this saying he's he's just completely immune. So it'll be interesting to see, like, you know how we were we weren't feeling very positive for the midterms. Yeah. And then, you know, people came through and 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 mm -hmm. restored our faith. I, I'm hoping in the end that's what's gonna happen is that people are gonna realize that, you know, this is not good. This is not good for the US. This is not good for the world. Mm -mm. So anyway, that's my, I mean, I I, I don't know well, if I was spending no. it or not, but it's very important for people. And I mean, we're still a few months out. And, you know, I don't think the Democrats can, uh, you know, change the, the leader now. That would just be chaos. Who would it be? It's yeah. not going to happen. Like, as much as I, I was even surprised <laughs> to see some of my like, the people I watch about getting my political analysis from that I trust, I even saw them posting things like, I love Biden, but I think it's time, which which shocked me. But, you know, you give people like their first 24 hour reaction, like give people their reaction. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think post reaction, it's very clear that there's no way we could find or create enough momentum behind a new person because Biden has been this thing for so long. It just wouldn't we would lose for sure. But there is a little silver lining in that, in this ruling happening in the two things. I think it, it distracted people from the debate. Like that was, yeah. people were like, we're screwed. Like it was fucking crazy. And I, I agreed it was bad, but like, you know, this immunity uh, uh, case c coming forward with their, with the, what they ruled on. Like, I think it gives a little bit of like, Oh, this is worse than a bad debate. And there's, the one thing that the court requested was that there is a hearing that has to happen before the election in which Jack Smith is going to bring all the evidence that he has forward. And you're actually going to hear a testimony from Mike Pence, right. the vice president. And what I think that will help is the undecided voters just reminding everybody about what January 6th really felt like, because everybody's forgotten already, especially the people in the middle. They're like, oh, he, it wasn't that bad. And all the all the leaders have been, all the Republican leaders have been touting the same message. But if we, even closer to the election, publicly get to just relive that, because like it'll be like the hearing that they had, but on steroids, because you know that Jack Smith has been like collecting the receipts about what really happened. I think that will help sway some voters. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen in other ways before then, but that gives me a little bit of hope. I also agree with you, though. We need to be much more realistic. Project 2025 is a real thing. These people absolutely know what they want to do. And I don't care. To me, it's like your position on Palestine, Israel that's not what this election can be about. Your position on Biden being too old, that's not what this election is about. Do you want to have a president or a king? That's what this election is about. Right, right. And and everything that he could actually do. He could throw so many people into jail and he, he's, he's immune from it. He just said he wanted to have a live, a live, hearing f about Liz Cheney being a uh, uh, what was it the news story that I literally just watched he wants to do this to yeah he wants to uh, have a, a, a live military tribunal against Liz Cheney yeah no they're going to do all kinds of things you know because you've got a bunch of kooks in there as well and they're all going to be and the, and the Supreme Court is behind them but I want to go back to something that I that I said, that, that, and I've said this even before all this. It's the Democrats need to to they need to fight. They need to yeah. you know, throw fire at fire. And you know, Biden when he came out um, um, last night or the night before about his comments about the Supreme Court decision, 
I mean, he did. It was very good. His speech was yeah. very good, but he could have said a lot more. He said, you know, I, I could have stopped this prosecution of of my son, yeah. but I'm not going to do that. And he's not going to do that. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, these rules, what the Supreme Court has decided also applies to the Democrats. Yep. So Biden could say, well, you know, I'm just going to throw Trump in jail. Yeah. And I'm going to be immune because it's part of my thing. You know, like, why aren't they saying crazy things? And I would love to hear the Republicans reaction. They can't. They can't react. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Yeah. And I just think they're missing a, a, a glorious opportunity. They're just being too the way it should be. Yeah. But this is not the way it is. Uh, you know, th this is not the way it should be anymore. You know, this is the way this is the way of Trump. Yeah. And so it's like they're still trying to play by old rules that don't really apply anymore. Like, it's not, it's Justin, it's not old rules. These are new rules that they are creating. No, <laughs> like the Democrats are playing by old rules. Old well, rules of like, this is how we do it. We don't go. We don't we don't we don't make it uncomfortable. We don't try to do tit for tat. We don't because what that, that's just going to start a chain reaction of blah, 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 blah. But that's when we didn't have trump in politics that that was okay then but now it's, it's completely new, different a whole new ball game and i i just think that and you know he's coming across as strong and aggressive and blah 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 and you know the the democrats it's the opposite yeah who who is the i've seen a couple of democrats get on there and they were like really strong and positive and i thought wow these guys are great yeah. But there's not enough of them. They got to get. They got to get out there, and I think they will as it gets closer. Yeah, um, I, I think more and more people will get involved. I mean, it's just that you know people forget. So we're still a few months away. This has got to happen a month or two months before. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, I wanted to talk about that, but let's 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 talk about something else. Why don't we talk about um, what's coming up for us? Because we've got something new that we're quite excited about. Yeah, we haven't made a, a film in like six or seven years. We have a couple films on the channel, obviously, that you probably all know about. Some of them are ours. Some of them are, are other people's submissions. Um, the last two, one of the last ones we did together was called Searching for Love. And um, it premiered at Buffer Festival in 2018, I think, and was all about the search for love as a gay man in the world. Um, and we haven't really attempted a film again since then, but always knew we kind of wanted to. Um, and last week we were just chatting about life, really. I mean, it really came out so organically and just in a conversation about relationships, about open relationships. And we... Monogamous, really, relationships. monogamous relationships. And we, from that moment, realized we definitely want to make some sort of movie documentary uh, about relationships with gay men and open relationships versus monogamous relationships versus throuples versus, you know, open that failed and became, there's, there's so many variations on this, which is exactly why we want to explore it because I think we both ourselves as just individuals and gay men are fascinated by our community and its attempt to create different dynamics and relationships. We just don't do it the same way that straight people do. Um, or even like our other queer counterparts, like gay men are its own thing. And we want to explore that. And how it's changed over the years, mm -hmm. changed a certain way and then changed back and then yep. changed again. And, um, yeah, like the amount of sex that used to be had and then the AIDS epidemic changed everything. And now we're back to a much more like sex positive, you know, live your best life. You don't have to be afraid of necessarily dying of AIDS anymore, or HIV. So, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to our our initial? Because it really was born last week. We're really at the beginning stages, but, you know, we're all about sharing the process. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, our our. We wrote a few things down, and one of the things we we you know, um, one of the big big things, um, is is it possible to be in a monogamous gay relationship? Yeah, 
You know, I mean, I think that's, um, yeah, that's the question. I mean, mm-hmm. we go on and on about it right now, but mm-hmm. that's really kind of what we want to explore with, with the, um, how do, how, do, how do I say it? With the, not the status, but the way things are in our, in, in the gay world now. Yeah. And the amount of, of freedom um that is out there and the amount of sex mm-hmm. and you know there's so many things i mean is it really possible to have a monogamous relationship and you know so we want to talk to people who are in monogamous relationships we want to talk to people who are in open relationships mm-hmm. whether it's open and talked about or open and not talked about um as you said you know possibly throuples Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think one of the reasons we're saying this now is that if, you know, if anybody would like to get involved, um, we're we're looking for people to be in the documentary. Yeah. You know, we're looking to interview couples. Yep. Um, so. Or even yeah. single people who have, you know, been in previous open relationships that failed. Mm-hmm. You know, their, their breakup happened because of the open relationship. Um, because the one side of the coin is exactly as you expressed this can is it possible to be in an open in a monogamous relationship in 2024 and the opposite side of that coin is it possible to be in a healthy open relationship in 2024 um and and i think more than single people who have been in or out i think it'd be nice to interview a couple who are uh no longer together because they were in an open relationship Mm -hmm. and why that happened. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big undertaking that we're doing, but I don't know of anyone who has done this uh, to the extent that we're going to do it. So um, yeah. So stay tuned. Yes. Keep your eyes open for more. And if you hear of people who want to be involved, just send us an email queer at the queer network.com or send us a message on Instagram in some way, let us know you want to be a part of it. Yeah. We're, we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to have zoom calls with people and, yeah. and, and talk to them and see if it's the right fit. Um, you know, what we're looking for and yeah, blah, blah. So now you said off, uh, off air here, you said there's something else that's you. Yes. There's another little announcement I have, which is even going to be a surprise to Eddie. This is something I've kept very close to my own heart. And maybe I alluded to it once to you, but I'm actually not sure if I have, because I've really told no one. Um, I know, but it's, this is not, it's not dramatic. It's just like something new that I, that I'm, that I'm sharing with the world now. Why don't we save that? And um, I have no idea what it is, what Justin is up to. Um, Surprise. I love surprises. If you don't know me now, you know, I love surprises. So we will put that out in a couple of days and you'll see what, uh, what he's up to, what he's done. I've been doing. Yeah. Mm. Which he hasn't told anybody apparently. Yes. So stay tuned for that. And have a lovely couple days wondering what the fuck I've been up to. (laughs) Love y'all. Happy Post Pride.